This is a tutorial on proportional integral derivative controllers and how to obtain tuning constants through a simulation. We're going to do that simulation in Gecko. One of the things that we need to get first is the terminology for a PID controller. The controller output is a thing that the controller can adjust. In this case, the thing that's on the right here, you see the animation of uh, actual data that's collected from this temperature control lab. Now we have the controller output, which is the heater, and we have the set point, which we give it. We tell the controller what temperature we want. We also have the process variable, which is our measured temperature that is right here. We take a measurement every second and then based on that measurement we adjust the controller output or the heater. So in this case we have the three things that uh, make up a controller. We have the actuator. This is the heater in this case. The thing that the controller can adjust. We have the set point and that's the target uh, temperature that we would like to reach. Kind of like a, in your home, like a thermostat temperature. And then we also have the process variable. That would be the measured temperature. That's the actual measurement or the actual uh, value of where we are right now. And so in this upper right, uh, in, in the plot there, you can see that the orange value is the measured the dashed blue line is a set point, and the black is the heater or the output. Okay, so let's go over a little bit on, on how to set this up and simulate it, because a lot of times we can you know tune this by trial and error, but that can take a while. Uh, and uh, it also, for sensitive processes, you don't want to necessarily implement bad tuning on those processes. So we're going to simulate with a couple equations how to do how to, how to simulate a PID controller for our system. So the very first thing that we need is we need to calculate the air and that's the difference between the set point and the PV. So this might be the set point and then we have the PV value okay that's going to be trying to reach the set point and the difference between those two at any point is going to be the air. So just mathematically it's the difference between the set point and the PV. And then that air comes in at different places here. You have the very first one which is the proportional term. The second one which is the integral term. And the third one it's kind of a modification of you would normally have plus and then air, but we break that apart into two pieces and that would be the set point and the process variable just plugging in this equation right here and to avoid derivative kick we just get rid of the set point changes. So that's why we just go with negative PV instead of the set point changes. Okay, so that's a pretty standard way to get rid of uh, derivative kick. We're just going to implement this. So this is our derivative, our integral, and our proportional. And then this is for bumpless transfer. When you turn on the controller, um, and you just say that the set point equals initially the PV value. So all of those other terms are going to be zero. And it's where you're starting from. So for example, if you're going down the road and you turn on your cruise control you're going 50 miles an hour um, and you have the gas pedal pressed 40 percent of the way then that would be like 40 percent you know for your gas pedal okay so let's uh... we'll implement this in gecko and the other thing i'll mention too is there's uh, you know some other resources here for obtaining uh... you know tuning values there's this jupiter notebook that has a nice uh, you know, sliders there that you can adjust the tuning constants back and forth and, and see you know, what you have for the different uh, responses. Uh, in particular, you know, breaking out those three terms that we just mentioned, 
the proportional, integral, and derivative terms. Okay, so you can see that very well right there. Okay, um, I'm going to go over to Gecko Start. And you can get this sheet uh, from... Okay, I'll just type in AP Monitor Gecko. If you just search for that, it'll be one of the first links that come up. Here are all the example problems. This one is going to be number 14. So if you just want to get the source code for that, you can just come here and select it and copy it. Or you can go to the Jupyter Notebook link and get the solutions for it here. So there they are. We're going to be going over number 14. And here is the blank workbook that we're going to be starting with. Okay, so the very first thing that we'll need is to import Gecko. If you don't have it already, just do pip install Gecko. And if you need to upgrade yours, just do upgrade with the double dash. Okay, when you run that, it'll go out and get the latest version. You have to be an administrator on your account in order to be able to do that. Okay, I'll import Gecko once it's installed. And then we'll first of all um, also import just a couple other packages that we're going to need. We'll need NumPy and we'll need matplotlib in order for plotting. Okay, and don't forget the matplotlib inline if you're going to be in a Jupyter notebook. Next, we'll create our gecko model with m equals gecko. I'll just simulate out to a time of 40 into the future. And let's do m dot time. This is our gecko model time. We're going to do lin space between 0 and time final. And we'll have uh, 0.5 second intervals. OK, so I can just print that see what kind of times I have there. Okay, so those are the time points where I want to solve this. Okay, let's go on. Uh, we have uh, different steps that we're going to have in our... Okay, this one is going to be a step for our set points. Um, let's go ahead and just do uh, zeros first of all. Okay, this is going to be our set point two times uh, T final plus one. Okay, so I have 81 uh, values there. And then uh, I'm going to just adjust the steps. I'll say step uh, from 3 to 40 is going to be equal to 2. And then step, and then let's do 40 on, is equal to 5. Okay, so we'll do two steps up there. Okay, now we need to develop our PID controller model. And so let's just come up with some constants like KC, which is our controller gain. And I'll set that equal to 15. Tau i, that's our integral time constant or reset time. That's going to be 2. As that one gets smaller, that term, that integral term gets larger. And let's do tau d as well. This one is just going to be 1. A lot of times we just leave off the derivative. Uh, most controllers seem to be proportional integral uh, just because noise um, can make that derivative term. You know, if you don't do a filter, it can make that derivative term not behave very well. Okay, I'm going to do my OP, my controller output bias. Okay, and we can just set that equal to like a constant. I'm just going to do 0 there. Uh, here's my output. And now I'm going to make a new variable for this. This is going to be a new gecko variable. And I'll say that the value initially equals 0. OK, and then I have my PV. This is my process variable. So let's set that one equal to 0 as well. And then I'm going to need my set point. 
Now my set point is going to be a parameter. It's not going to be calculated by the computer, but it is going to be calculated, you know, given by us. And I'm just going to feed in the step value. Okay, the next thing that we need is our integral. Okay, I'll do integral um, equals, and then I want to start that at an initial value of zero, just like the other ones. So I'm going to be computing this middle term right here. Okay, and I'm going to say that uh, that equals equals uh, the air dt. And then in order to be able to put this into the equations, I'll just differentiate it. Okay, equals air. So that's the form of the equation that I'm going to put into my model. Okay, um, and then we'll calculate the air as well. This one, we can just leave this one as an intermediate. Um, so it's going to calculate that at every iteration of my solver. It doesn't need to be necessarily an implicit equation. We can make that an explicit equation. And then let's do a couple of our implicit equations. These are going to be solved by the solver. Okay, so this one's going to be the integral dt equals, okay, that's going to be equal to our air. And then we also have the next one, which is the output, it is going to be output uh, zero. That's the controller bias. Now this is the these two equations that I've listed over here on the left. Okay, and so we have plus Kc times air plus, and then I'll do Kc divided by tau i times the integral. Okay, and then minus, and this is going to be the process variable, dt. So that's a derivative um, of the process variable. And let's go ahead and do our tuning constants there, which are Kc times, and then we'll have our next one, which is going to be tau d. Okay, so there's our equation with our tuning constants, Kc tau d. And you can see the Kc times tau i, and then for the proportional part, it's just Kc. Okay, so now we're done with our equations. And uh, let's go and come up with our process model now. So one of the things is we, we have to have a process model, not just a PID model. Uh, so how the PID affects the process, we need to be able to simulate that. I'm just going to do a first order linear system here. Uh, okay, but you could put in anything you wanted there for your process, just a set of equations. And so I'm going to do, in, in this case, it's going to be tau p times, and let's go ahead and come up with the pv dt. Okay, I'll do plus pv equals kp times, and then this is going to be our op. Okay, so that's just a simple first order relationship between the output which is going to be your input to your process, and uh, the process variable, which is going to be your measurement. So we're just simulating that here. If you actually had a real process, you wouldn't put in the simulated equations, but we're going to test it on the simulated system uh, before we test it on the actual process. Okay, then we'll do options. I mode equals four. That's going to go to simulation mode, and then we can solve this. Okay, I'll put, um, I'll just have it display first of all. So there's our PID controller, our process model, and then we'll solve it. We'll just see if it's able to solve successfully. Okay, I forgot the double equal sign here. So there's the first error that it reported. And let's see if I can find the next one. Okay, and let's see, integral. I think I redefined that INTGL. Okay. Let me get rid of the R there. And I'll get rid of the R here. Okay, now it's able to solve. You can see with IPOPT, it solves in two iterations. 
and it found the solution to that. So very fast uh, solution. Now let's go ahead and just plot this. So I'll create a new figure, okay, and then we'll plot a couple things. We'll do time, and this is going to be op dot value, and let's make this into a first subplot, okay, just so we can see this separate from the PV and the set point. And then this is going to be our second one. And let's fill this in with set point and PV. Okay, and then we could label it, um, you know, in the end. And also let's turn off the display of the solver. So we don't necessarily need to see that. Okay, so there is our output on the top. And there you can see the set point and the PV values that are there, um, you know, how well it tracks. So one of the things you can do is come in here and uh, either change these yourself. So let's say you say, well, that is a little bit too aggressive. Let me put a tau i equals 3 instead. And so you can see the the difference in tuning there. Maybe you want to dial back the gain as well. Okay, so you can see that it's going to change as you, um, you know, change these values here. You're going to be able to see you know, a different response from your controller. I'll go ahead and run it here so you can see it change. So there you got a different uh, you know, output, and because you have a different output, it causes the process variable to not be as aggressive or more aggressive in, tor in terms of reaching the set point. So this is a simulation. You might also want to optimize those values as well. So these are currently set up as just constants. But if we switch those over to uh, FVs, which are fixed values over the whole time horizon, and then I'll give it an initial value of 5. And maybe I'll say it has a lower bound of 1 and an upper bound of uh, 20, for example. Okay, then what we can do is then optimize that now. So we can turn on the status. We can say that's our, um, our status is going to be on. So we're going to let the optimizer determine that value. And then we would just need to change this to dynamic optimization mode, which is I mode 6 right down here. Um, and then we'd need to set up an objective as well. You know, what would be the objective for this? Um, maybe we want to minimize the difference between the uh, you know set point and PV so you could do like an air squared okay but maybe you also want to uh, minimize the the Delta um, on you know maybe the difference or the change in the OP as well let's just go and do this we'll just minimize the air squared there's some other um, other things you can do to uh, adjust that objective function in a smart way. Okay, so I'm going to also print the value of KC. Okay, so let's do KC dot value zero. We'll convert it to a string just so we can see it. Um, and let's go ahead and run this now. Okay, so let's see oh, I don't need the this just in order to square it I need to square it like this in Python okay so it said go to 20 to reduce that let's go ahead and just you know put an upper bound of, of a higher value here I'll do a thousand and then let's see if it comes up with a, a better value here okay so it was able to go to a thousand now if you have a first order system like this it, you know, the higher the gain, the less error there's going to be always. So it's going to try to go to a maximum value. So we could put in other things like, um, let's go ahead and just put in one more state here, make it a second order system. Okay. Uh, variable, we'll say value equals zero. And we'll make a new x variable. 
I'll make this a second order system now. Okay, and let's just go ahead and do tau p times x dt equals, uh, I'll do plus x equals, um, let's say, op. And I'll just replace that with x. I've just made it a second order system. And so let's see if we get a similar result here. Okay, so KC, it says we needed a KC of 3.49. Okay, still not, uh, you know, very good tuning here. Let me dial down this one just a little bit. That's a fairly large time constant there. Okay, that's still KC equals 1,000. Put that at 5. Okay, so it came up with, it's going to optimize the value of KC in order to be able to minimize the sum of the squared error between the set point and the PV. Okay, um, you know, this is just an example of taking that simulation uh, with our process model. Okay, again, you can put anything there that represents your system. And you have your PID equations right here. So you have an optimization environment now where you can adjust either yourself the values of the tuning parameters or you can let the optimizer do it for you okay and so you know for example you could include um, you know this tau i in there as well and let it come up with optimal values of tau i okay let's say the lower bound is 0 0.1 and upper bound we'll just say that's going to be a hundred Okay, and let's see if this one will also uh, help it converge a little bit faster. Let's just try this one as well. Here, I'll print uh, tau i. Okay, and I didn't really try this beforehand, so I haven't... Okay, so it did go to... Uh, had a very nice response here. Um, again, this is just a second order system. You would also need to include saturation limits. Uh, for example, if the heater value could go between, you know, zero and um, 100. Let's go ahead and add those in. Okay, so I'm going to add in some saturation limits here. The lower bound equals zero, and upper bound equals 100. And then let's see what it can do. To stay within those limits. Okay, so there is another response here. You can see that it came up with KC and tau i that um, you know keep us within the saturation limits, um, but also are optimized for the system to minimize the squared error. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, this is uh, example number fourteen of many here in the uh, different things you can do with Gecko. Here's PID controller tuning. Up next are gonna, is going to be a process simulator and then we're going to feed that information to a moving horizon estimator. Uh, the updated parameters from that estimator are going to be fed into a model predictive controller. And then as a final thing we'll cover some debugging resources on how to troubleshoot your applications.